This is Keiko from Brooklyn Shoes Base. Oh, I feel like a tiny person with this angle. Sorry, it's a little weird. Um, sorry for the delay. Thanks for waiting for a little bit longer. Um, today I'm going to be having Selena of The Art of Shoes. She moved from Texas to now LA. I want to hear how she's doing during pandemic and then how she's evolved and I want to hear all about her classes that she's been doing. So let's... Oh, she's on. Hold on. Your request, go live. Hi. Hi, Kato. How are you? I'm great. This oh, is so weird. You. This is my first Instagram live. <laughs> <laughs> great. Thank you for go going on with me. Sure, I'm sure. Frazzled. Sorry, I just ran into the door. Um, <laughs> okay. so thanks, for, thanks for accommodating the time change. Hey, I know how it is to make a warehouse run, run or a storage run. I was there the other day and I was like, why am I constantly rearranging everything? And it's like new inventory comes in, I lose space. And anyway, I get it. Oh, thank, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so how have you been? You look great. Your Thanks. face looks great behind you too. You have a leather wall right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. During my uh, virtual classes, it's so funny. Instagram is the only one who flips my logo around. So I've thought about like doing a reverse logo so everyone can see the art of shoes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. I actually did that for the first couple times. Like I hand wrote something and I traced it on the other side so I can show it this way. <laughs> but, but yeah no cool um, I've seen that you've been doing so many courses like so tell us yeah. a little bit about like I mean I should go back a little bit I know I you know I do want to know more about like what's going on now but I want to know more about like how you got into shoes yeah. um, and where you started where you want to go let's talk a bit like can you go back in time and talk about like how you got into shoemaking and designing yes 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 so I have a really um, awesome story when it comes to where I've started with um, shoe design and shoemaking and just being in the shoe business overall um, so when I was about 20 no 19 I just didn't want to go to college I was putting it off as as long as I could and so I worked retail for Steve Madden, um, and um, it was really awesome. I was an assistant uh, assistant manager, um, and it was super, super fun. At that time, I feel like Steve only had about, like, 10 stores, maybe less. Um, so he, he was smaller. I mean, now he's huge. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I was one of the assistant managers, and um, at one point, I got a promotion to become the store manager and run the store, and it got really boring. Um, because <laughs> being a store manager is just being a pencil pusher, basically. You know, you're like working with the finances, you're pulling sales reports, you're like, you know, you're in the back office. Yeah, right. you're not connecting with your customer anymore. So um, so I was, I was kind of bummed, you know, that I didn't have the connection with the customer. And so what I started doing was just like staying a little later after my shift and like helping the girls out or guys on the floor um, and getting feedback from the customers and basically just like, you know, asking like, you know, if, you know, it was uncomfortable, you know, they, they definitely like vocalize that or if the wedge was too high or, you know, any kind of like fitting comments or um, wish material comments yeah. or yeah. stuff like that. And so what I was doing with that information was I was just developing my own trend report and I would send that back to the wow. home office in New York. So again, it was small. We had like close contact with the New York office. I was in San Antonio, Texas, okay, uh -huh. um, where I'm from. And so, um, and so it was awesome. So, you know, I was also like looking out for like, you know, 
color and palette and like seeing what girls are wearing you know mm -hmm. like if they were wearing like bandanas on their hair you know i'd be like oh my god let me put that in my report back to the home office and the the, the report was called what's hot what's not it was so oh, basic cool. cute. That's so cute. <laughs> i mean 19 years old i'm like what's hot what's not but um <laughs> so i'd put That's like awesome. you know red bandanas or whatever and so yeah. they would send me like you know stuff based on my feedback so they oh, sent me like the bandana flip-flop uh -huh. blew out of it you know wow. or like you know the wedge that I was asking to be lower if they had any in the office or, or in that factory or whatever so they sent it they would send it to me and blew out of it so wow. my store became one of the top selling stores and wow, it was great. really really awesome um and so th that continued, you know, I continued my report and they loved it and it, it was working. Um, and then my district manager had decided that she was going to move to the Chicago, um, the Ch Chicago district. So I was like, she's like, Hey, if you want to go to Chicago, you let me know. And I was like, uh, yeah, get me out of Texas, please. Like, <laughs> I can't breathe, you know? Like, it was just like, I felt like I needed to jump you out of my ready. skin and yeah. into like a big city, you know? Yeah. Um, so anyway, so I moved to Chicago and um, the agreement was is they were gonna allow me to go to school. And um, so there was an art institute there. Yeah. I was so yeah. excited because in, oh, cool. you know, in San Antonio or Texas, there, there wasn't much. And, you know, I was so simple minded at the time. Like I didn't think like, oh, I can go somewhere else and go to school. Like it was just like money, money, money. Um, and so I moved to Chicago, um, looked into school, um, and what my classes would be and presented that to my uh, boss at the time. And she was like, okay, let me get this over to the corporate office and let me see what they say. And they came back with a big fat no. Oh, no. Um, and I was like, oh. After you moved too. After I moved yeah. and they had agreed and all of the stuff. And so I was like, you know what? This is annoying. And <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to go to school. Like I always wanted to be a clothing designer. That was what I really, really passionately like wanted to do. Um, not that I'm not passionate about shoes, but that was my initial, uh, you know, wish. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so yeah, so I went around and I looked, started looking for another job and I was uh -huh. like, I'm going to go to school either way. I'm here. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to turn back and, you know, be here forever. And so, um, I got another job offer and I, and um, so I was about to take it. I let the company know um, mm. and, and they kind of like got a little, got a little freaked out. You know, Basil, they were like, yeah, like, wait, hold on a second. Because at that point, remember, I'm still sending these trend reports. So mm. now I'm in a different arena. I'm in a bigger city. I'm seeing yeah. different, you know, John, John yep. people, yep. different trends. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like sitting in these reports and I'm getting back product and numbers are growing, growing. again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they basically took that, all of that information into account and they were like, hold on a second, before you do that, why don't we like interview you as an assistant designer here in the home office? And I'm like, this seems like a big ah, jump. Yeah, like, this seems well. like too big of a jump. And I thought it was not right I was like this is weird it doesn't make sense like I haven't even gone to school like I have zero design experience I don't know how to sketch nothing I knew nothing um and so they were like just shut up and we're flying you over for the day and you're uh -huh. gonna be in the office and meet all kinds of people and then we're gonna fly you back to Chicago I'm like okay cool so I did uh -huh. and I'm on the plane um, arriving LaGuardia and yeah. I see the skyline and I'm like, oh, holy cow, yeah. oh my God, you're on the left side of the plane. It's so clear, right? Yeah. So I'm like, oh my God, this is incredible. I just had this feeling that like I knew I was meant to be in New York. Mm -hmm. um, so I like just stayed in that moment and like got there to the office and it was so bananas so amazing so rad like i was uh -huh. just so excited the whole time i met with the two head designers yeah. i met steve um and saw their shoe factory that they have yeah. in house the sample in room the sample mm -hmm. room yeah exactly and so i am just like oh my god i was just like I so love it. excited yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I was like a kid, you know, not only was I a kid, but I felt like a kid, you know, like a little right. kid. So, um, but how old were you like, by then when you came to New York to visit for this one day? I think I was just turning 21. Wow. Yeah. 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 I was just turning 21. And so I was just like, this is so crazy. And I met everybody and I interviewed with everybody. And yeah. then I, they flew me back that night and I didn't hear from anybody for like four days. And I was mm. totally freaking out. I was like, right. okay, what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? Like what's going right. on? And as right. soon as I just like kind of let that go, I get a call. I'm at the store in Chicago. I'm, I'm at the, the Madden store and um, the head of, um, the head of retail calls me. She's like, Hey, Selena. I'm like, Hey, Kathy. And she's like, we want to offer you an assistant design position in New York in our office. We're going to move you over. Can you be here basically in like three months? And I was like, what? Oh my God. Like, I just could not believe it. Yeah, the thing wow. is, is that mm -hmm. Steve was, a, and I found this out later, but like mm -hmm. Steve was a huge, huge proponent of getting people from in the store into his community yeah. in um you know in the home office because yeah. you have that connection with the customer you know what the customer likes like you're so close i mean yeah. till this day he will go to nordstrom's sit on the sales floor and watch people try on yeah. shoes you know i think he he himself was like uh in the retail too right i think he was like yes. a salesperson at the at those shoe yes. shops and that's kind mm -hmm. of how he got into shoes too yeah it is, yeah. it is. And that's how a lot of people in in the uh, design industry have gotten into shoes. Not all of them, but you know, a lot of people in the industry have been like, mm -hmm. like that. So um, you've seen his um, documentary. Okay, yeah, so good. Um, <laughs> so, good. Yeah. So, so yeah, so then I worked there in the office and mm -hmm. my job as an assistant designer, my, one of my mentors, Dee Grulon, um, who is now a uh, I believe she's president of Aldo on the store. Uh -huh. um, she was one of a huge mentor for me and mm -hmm. so wonderful, taught me so much. And mm -hmm. um, I, again, reminder, didn't know how to sketch, never worked in a corporate office before, didn't know how to design. I had no idea what I was doing. So the first job I had was she would give me her sketches and mm -hmm. say, go to the factory sample room. Yeah. Go to the sample room with this sketch and follow this shoe around as it's being made. Go pick mm -hmm. out the leathers yep. Yep. and basically make it come to life, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I was like, okay. I'm like, I think I got it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. That's so it was awesome. Awesome. you so went then, to the factory or sample yeah, room. I go to the sample room. Yep. I take, I get the materials, pull it out, you know, whatever she wanted and then take it to the pattern maker. Um, take the, pa take the pattern over to the stitcher, take the stitcher, you know, from the stitcher to the last or like all the things, you know, and then straight to like it getting finished and going to like the heating yeah. um, machine. And uh -huh. so, um, I just like would get this like thing in my chest where I'm like, Oh my God, this is amazing. This is amazing. So the beautiful part is it, is it, I, you know, I did learn a lot. I, I learned yeah. so much about it. Um, yeah. but what, what I did is I pushed myself so hard to during those years, during mm -hmm. those years, like I did not know how to sketch my boss when she would give me her sketches. I would hang on to them and I would take them home at night and sketch on top, like trace on top. And my hand, you know, now knows how, obviously now 22 years later or whatever, knows how to sketch shoes, but don't ask me to sketch anything else because I cannot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I train myself how to sketch shoes. So um, yeah, so it was really cool, really, really cool. And I'm so grateful for the experience. I stayed there for about five years. Oh, wow, wow. And then five years later, did you kind of already know that you liked more of the making? Is that how, how you kind of transitioned? Or did you stay in the industry a little more? Did you develop shoes? Did yeah, you so I, um, I, 
I still, you know, I enjoyed watching the making. At that point, I wasn't making, but I was always still interested in it. Mm -hmm. um, I teamed up with a woman named Diana Rupp from Make Workshop, which is still alive, and yep. you may know her, yep. um, back in 2011. And she had asked if I would teach some shoemaking classes, and I'm like, let me figure this out, you know? Like, I know enough from being in the factory for five years, like, let me start. And so I started like playing and doing it. And then eventually I was able to go to her space and I was able to teach classes. Like, I think it was like, yeah, it was about 2011. So it was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, I, I still loved it. I mean, anything shoes I loved. And at that time, like, I didn't think like it was a bad idea to have like a shoe, a thing as a hobby and a shoe thing as a career. Now I'm like, yeah, okay, no. I need another outlet. <laughs> <laughs> did you find one yet? Let me know. I, I did. Need... Oh yeah, yeah. What I is did. it? What is it? Oh, so I've been um, I've been um, taking classes at the Khan Academy. Okay. So it's have you heard of it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I've been taking like physics classes and wow. like some physics and all kinds of really cool geeky stuff. I love it. Oh, that's um, awesome. But like, you can basically like just go to school. I mean, remember, I didn't go to school. So like, I definitely missed that part. And um, I feel like, you know, if I can take little bits and pieces from you like things yeah. that I like, then yep. I can totally have a good time. Oh, that's cool. That's it's fun. cool. Cool. And then so so five years at Bennett. And then did you move on to other? I think you did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what did you do? Like design wise, I got a job offer from a company called Jim Lar, which is yeah. now a global brands group. And um, I worked with, um, there were two American Eagles at the time, American Eagle Outfitters yeah. and then American Eagle that was acquired from an Italian brand, interesting enough. And so Jim Lar owned American Eagle not American Eagle mm -hmm. Outfitters. Um, so I had got recruited to work for that company, uh, which I gladly accepted because at that point I was just a little like I needed a change. I wanted to grow. Um, and, um, and so I worked with them, but the goal was to build this brand up so they could sell it. Oh, okay. And so that's what we did. We built the brand up and it got sold to Payless at the time. Mm. And it was a pretty big sale and it was really great um, for the company. And then from there, I got moved to Fry, mm -hmm. um, Fry Boots. Yeah. Um, and I absolutely did not enjoy it. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I say that with a big heart because I really love the brand 100%. It had nothing to do with people. It had everything to do with where I was growth-wise. Um, oh. I was still fresh. You know what I mean? Like I was used to designing dress shoes. Yeah. And so when I go straight to like artisan, hand-working, stuff like that, it wasn't a good fit for me. It, mm -hmm. it, I was struggling. Um, and so, so anyway, it was just like a little tough. And I was like, I really, really want to be good at this. But not only do I not want to work on like Western boots, because I'm from Texas. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I okay. also just like, you know, I don't have the aesthetic for this kind of feel mm -hmm. right now. Like, I'm so fresh. I'm so yeah. new. Were you able to like, go work, move laterally? Yeah, yeah, it was really wonderful. Company. So they at the time, they also had Calvin Klein. So then I worked on Calvin Klein. And then um, I became the design director for Calvin Klein. And I was there for five years. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. And then you know how in the industry, like designers and designers, and then there's sample developers or like the, you know, in production and all separated, but did you work solely on design? Or did you also do a little bit of development too? Yeah, um, usually, any position I've had has been design and development. Oh, that's great. Um, so it's been pretty great. Um, I will say with the brand that I work on now, I do have a developer. It's wonderful. I don't have to fill out like spec sheets and get like follow, late night, like, follow up. And, yeah, late you know. night calls and early mornings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, really great <laughs> yeah well so how did you jump from okay now a little fast forward but like from being at fry for now it seems like you've been there for a while because you have you kind of cross you know yeah have different projects going on mm -hmm. and then from there to being independent how did you where when did you decide to go independent 
So um, after I was at Calvin for about five years, mm -hmm. I just was kind of like, I don't know, I just felt like it was time for me to not be in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know specific reasons why I just didn't feel like it was it fit anymore. You know, mm -hmm. I was going to China about six times a year. Wow. I was tired. Um, I felt like we're just making shoes. Why are we so stressed? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it just Nobody, you know, nobody's gonna die. You know, it's but you're really stressed trying to so, so stressed, you yeah. know, and like, why, why so many trips? Why the overthinking? Why the, why 20 meetings in one day, you know? Wow. Um, wow. That was hard, you know? Yeah. And kind of like, it was kind of like a ping pong. I felt like a ping pong ball kind of being like, um, you know, we had to work with the Calvin office directly and yes. then internal with the company. Yep. Yeah. So there were a lot of opinions, you yes. know, and that's okay. It's okay yep. for everyone to have opinions. I just think that like for a designer, when you live and breathe this every single day, you know what you're bringing to the table. You know what's out there. You know what's trending. You know what's not hot anymore. You know it's not going to be hot in one year when you are delivering this program right. or package. Um, but then you have like, these people over here and these people over here and I want this, but I don't want this. And I'm trying to like comp compromise in between them to make them both happy. And it was just exhausting. You're right. um, so yeah. So I just decided that I just was going to go on my own and I didn't have a job either. I just right. had like a savings account that I had really made sure I had. Um, wow, that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I grew up with a single mom. So I, um, I had, I always had a fear of like, you know, the struggle again. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so wow. yeah, I had a savings and you're like, okay, I have X amount of time. You did you give yourself like a timeline or when you left? Like I went I think I went to Miami. No, I went to Hawaii and I was like, I'm just gonna go here. I had some miles because remember I was going yes, to traveling so much yeah. six times a year. <laughs> Um, so I went to Hawaii, came back, and then just um, started reaching out to people and saying, like, hey, do you need anybody? And then I worked with um, different companies throughout the years. And it's like a freelance designer. Freelancer, yep. And so I was still in New York um, mm -hmm. at the time. And then, you know, 15 years of being in New York, I was like, I think, you know, I kept moving closer and closer to trees. I was <laughs> like on 14th street. Then I went to the East village again. Then I went back to Williamsburg. Then I went to Greenpoint. Then I'm like, okay, I think I should probably try to go back home and see how it feels. And mm -hmm. so I did. And I saw, you know, in Austin was a great opportunity for me to finally have a space. So my dream was always to have my own shoe store. And, um, along with the shoe store, have a little shoemaking, yeah. area uh -huh. and so uh that's what i did and it was really really wonderful so and then so now you were a retail store owner in a way like so you bought shoes wholesale mm -hmm. wow. yeah so it was really cool so i i bought all of these wonderful brands and i was so yeah. excited to bring like different kind of fashion to austin uh -huh, because uh -huh. austin is it can be trendy, but um, there's also not a lot of retail stores that bring certain product, especially footwear and footwear brands, mm -hmm. um, into the community. And so I was really excited about that. And I did that and it was wonderful. And I had always had a space like sectioned off for shoemaking, but I hadn't uh -huh. quite put it together yet. I used it as my design studio for when I was designing, designing. Yeah. still freelancing at the time. Ooh. And still am. Yes. And so, um, and so it was so funny, Keiko. I like, I think like for my, my store, like people were coming in to buy shoes, da, 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 da. And then maybe like five or six months after we were open, I had finally started the shoe making uh -huh. and nobody wanted to come in to buy shoes. They all wanted to come in to make Maybe. shoes. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> Let's just roll with the punches. <laughs> but so, then when you were carrying the shoes, though, did you have special, like, did you have, like, a smaller brands? Or was it, like, 
wear some shoes that you couldn't get at other stores like what was what was the selection um, like yeah i had like independent brands i yeah. had uh, i had some really a uh, great Alberta flight made made out of Brazil was really great. Um, I tried to collect as many independent brands as I could, but then also when you're a retailer and you're just starting out, people won't sell to you unless you're two years old. Um, maybe even one year old if you're lucky, but really? like, oh, oh if, as a or, retailer? Mm -hmm. I thought it was the opposite when like, you know, smaller designers, the retailers wouldn't pick up smaller designers because because um, oh because the same reason what because of the production issues or yeah something? exactly um you that's know that's a little what? different I, but i don't know um i would gladly i mean i carried taisha made out of guatemala which i worked on yeah, yeah. that was very small and yeah. I was just so happy to have something different. Um, so maybe with certain retailers, they'd probably run into that. But for me, some of the brands that I wanted, they'd be like, okay, we're not, you know, I would say maybe the the bigger brands, okay. not so independent, would, they would hold off. They'd be like, oh. no, you need to be open for two years. Because, you know, right. a lot of people don't last that long. So, and they want to make sure you can pay your bills too. Right, right, right. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but then I like sat with a, a bunch of inventory and I'm like, okay, I guess we're going this way. Let's go to this section of the right. store and just make shoes. Yeah, um, okay. That's so when you, you started doing more sneakers at first or did you do mm -hmm. sandals? sneakers and sandals? Yeah, sneakers, yep. sneakers sandals. and sandals. Those were, those were the two and always just, I mean, we usually just had like a full house. Um, I so loved great. like having like, I had like a Mother's Day event and I had like men coming in to bring their mothers and like uh -huh. making sandals with them or like Father's Day event. Dads yep. and their sons would come in and make yep. sneakers. Like yep. it was just such a lovely thing to have this community of people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um so, so great. So I definitely miss being in a store with people. Yeah, yeah, I bet. And then, and then throughout the whole, I feel like journey, you do have like the trends, not um, foreseeing the trends, you know, mm -hmm. and very design oriented, I guess, in a way I can see it. I mean, you can see it from your Instagram. You're like very, it's very like, beautiful. <laughs> you know, you. colors. Thank and you. Also. I yeah. definitely have help. I will be 100% honest with that. I have a wonderful person in Austin, Jeremy, who is, um, you know, I would say I've learned so much since COVID. I've learned so much of like, you know, now that we started, I basically started my business from scratch when COVID started. Yeah. So, oh. you know, once, this, once the area in Austin where, where my store was, the entire lot got bought out to turn wow. into so, was that was that like beginning of COVID? I remember that was you like were... right. That was right before COVID. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it was really weird. So the lot got bought out. So me and a couple other business owners lost our spaces, and now it's condos. And then I was temporarily with Chad Standard from Standard Handmade, mm -hmm. um, who's a men's shoemaker, and um, we shared a space for a little bit. And then COVID hit, and I was like, guess I'm not paying rent anywhere. I can't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, so I've learned a lot because it's almost like you're starting your business from scratch by, mm -hmm. you know, going virtual and doing all yeah. these specific things. And yeah. I've come to realize that like, there are so many important things that you should prior, so many things that you should prioritize when it comes to having an online presence. So right. photo, photographs, um, you know, aesthetic on Instagram, stuff like that, like all of those things need to be Matter. super important, yeah. digital yeah. marketing and all yeah. of that stuff. So, but I didn't, I didn't think that way before, you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's definitely taught me a lot being in right. this pandemic. Right, right. And then you did start the virtual classes. How's mm -hmm. that going? Are, are you enjoying like this? How, how is it? different from the in person like what do yes. you do the prep time seems longer and like trying to make sure that everybody has the kits oh my gosh yeah yes. I will tell you like I obsess and obsess and obsess about everything that's in people's packages because I want to make sure that every single thing is in there and um 
I don't, I just don't think I'm good at that. <laughs> right. So well, like, the, I could spend all day like checking, double checking, triple checking, but I have to do that. And that's right. like my struggle, you know? Mm -hmm. And it seems like such an easy thing, just put it in the box, you know? But like, for me, because I'm doing a shoe making, a clog making, a slipper making all at the same time, because I, I tend to ship like twice a week. Right. So I'm kind of like, uh, all like going at once. Yeah. And then you mix yeah, it up. Yeah, like I feel like it's directing some kind of symphony or something. I'm like, I don't know, it's crazy. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, you're right. The prep time is a lot longer. Um, the, obsess the obsessive time is a lot longer <laughs> for me. Um, is the class time shorter? The class time is not shorter. It is about the same time. Oh, okay, it's wow. Time pretty great. I will That's say there's a couple things I've noticed that are different and that um, it has its positives and, you know, negatives. I think um, when people are in my space, they actually have the option to choose from, you know, a couple more leathers um, or the waist is going to be a lot um, less if they're in person, you know. Um, you know, I get like a little crazy about like, it should be this square. Yeah. But it it really like shouldn't you know like we're trying not to waste yeah leather and we're yeah. trying to i'm trying to buy only what i'm going to use yeah. um definitely when i started this journey i was just like an excitable chihuahua i was like oh my god i want everything i love yeah. all the colors i need everything oh, yeah. and i ended up with all these leathers i'm like crap this is not good yeah. um, so now i'm like much yeah. more strategic you mm -hmm. know about what i get mm -hmm. Um, and then the other thing is, is like, you know, with the fittings, with the clogs and the slippers, usually mm -hmm. I'm doing the fittings for um, the students just to in, make sure that it's on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure it's on them because um, I don't send out last with my right. uh, making classes. So, um, so I'm doing that fitting on them and getting their feedback. Yeah. Now they're actually doing the doing fitting. It themselves. So it's, it's good and bad, you know, it's, yeah. it's. It, I think it's great actually for them because they're actually learning, learning. how to fit a shoe. Yeah. Um, so it's really, really, I think that's really wonderful. It, it yeah. keeps them interactive. And then I get to meet everybody's dogs and husbands oh, and, yeah. wives and kids. Yeah, and, and, kids and, and, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so great. Cool. Yeah. That is awesome. Would you just keep on doing that? Like, are you going to? Um, you know what? I'm not, I've learned during COVID not to make any plans. Um, <laughs> That's actually a good idea. Right? Um, I want to make plans and my mind goes there because I am a planner and right. I'm pretty strategic when it comes to a lot of things. But um, I think it's just best to not do that and try to just stay present. And, um, you know, my, my wish would be to have classes in person again after COVID um, and, you know, have some pop-up shops, you know, like whether it be like here in LA, here or in Austin, you know, um, you know, it was easy for me to move my stuff over to Los Angeles because my design work is here. And because wow. for so long, while I had the artist shoes, I depended on my travels to New York and Los Angeles to go grab leathers from the leather store to bring mm -hmm. back to Austin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Tandy leather is there and it's wonderful and it's great. But like, sometimes I can't get like, three rolls of leather in yeah. one color. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. probably the favorite color of the students. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's yeah. easier for me to just like go down the street, nice. rolls of leather, yeah. tap, you know? Um, yeah. So it's definitely pushed my yeah. um, creative side forward. forward. Yeah. yeah. And which yeah. I think is serving the brand a lot. Um, I definitely miss being in person, especially yeah. with um, my students in Austin, who I know very dearly. Um, yeah. Would but, they come and travel to see you in LA? You know, I've had so many of them virtual. And oh, virtual. They just yeah. Keep coming back, which is oh, great. And it's great. great. You know, I think that what has been wonderful about the virtual world is that you can get people from so many other states and yeah. they have to jump on a flight, you mm -hmm. know? So that's really great. Yeah, you know, yep. maybe maybe the virtual continues after COVID, and maybe it's like once a month for yeah. each or something like yeah. that. I agree. That sounds yeah. great. Can yeah. I go a little deeper into the making part? Like, sure. what kind of, what's your favorite tool? Like during your mm -hmm. class or what you use every day? 
I would say, well, you know, the, um, the die cutting machine is my favorite tool. The clicker? <laughs> the clicker the press. Wow. Do you it's have not one? mine though. It's oh. not mine. I okay. mean, I have my little, I can show you. It's, it's my little like hand crank and I got like a pressure, um, a compression to, so I can press a button and it goes down, but it's honestly like kind of the same thing as me cranking it. Um, so when I get to work with, um, a one teacher? of my partners yeah. here in Los Angeles, I'm like, I bring all my stuff, my EVA bottom and whatever. I'm like, can I use the clicker? And he's <laughs> like, sure. <laughs> so I go to town with that thing. Um, that's great. Yeah. So that's my favorite machine to favorite use. Favorite machine. And then are you, what are you working on now? Like I saw some new styles. Have you done a class on it yet? On which? Burks, Burkins. Oh, on the Burks? Not yet, not yeah. yet. Um, so those will launch, um, those will launch March. I think my first class I put down for March 13th. Let me see. Um, yeah, March 13th. And so I'm going to have signups by end of February or March 1st. Fun. I hope this time I can join. I've been like, I hope so too. Yeah. And it's like, I love it that, you know, it's like, a, you can not a drink and draw, but you can have a little like, you know, drink of your own. Yes, that's been wonderful with our, um, our hours. class. Um, Cause it's like less than three hours. It's like a little less than three hours. Wow. And uh, like a girl's night in and, uh -huh. you know, they'll just grab their cocktail or their glass of wine yes. and just I hang love out. it. It's been fun. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I always totally... like, I'm not, Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I love it that you just simplified it so that you can actually make it in three hours. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. Well, makers in three hours. Yeah, I think um, I think I am very different when it comes to shoemaking because I have the designer brain first. Um, so I want to make the other part like so simple. I, my attention span is very short, and so I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I took your, I took your pump making class. Yeah. And, and the remember? mules. Did you come from mules? And the mules. Yeah. And the mules. Yeah. I took two classes with yeah. you guys. And yeah. I was yeah. just like, I remember, um, who was I working with at the time? Bonnie. 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 She's so great. Yeah. And I was like, lasting the mule. And I was like, are you done? Yeah. <laughs> are, are we, we done, done yet? yet? Yeah, are we done yet? <laughs> That's fun. Uh, no, oh. and I have last and I have, um, you know, we did the mule making class back when Chad was working with us and it was great. Um, but it's really hard and I'll try it again uh, later once we have a space. Um, but it's really hard to get people to commit to like a two day class, yeah. you know, at least for, for what I have experienced. Mm -hmm. um, we can talk more about that if you have more tips for me, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I think right now for me, like shipping yeah. fast or anything like that is just, it's to me, it's out of the question. I just, right. I can't have another extra thing to keep track of. Right. Um, and it's working. So it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's working. Um, any personal projects for yourself at the moment? Uh, personal shoe projects. Personal projects. Oh, oh that's Elena. Uh, that's All okay. Right. Oh, um, oh, somebody asked Amita Anthony is Selena. Do you use a specific type of last? I don't think you do. Not right now. Not for the shoes that we're making. Um, everything is fit to each person's foot and they're doing the fitting themselves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keith's shoe talks are the best. I think he called me Keith. I think it's, a, <laughs> it's like autocorrect or something. But yeah. Right. For sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. I was asking any personal projects. Um, oh, I so got cut off. Yeah. Personal as in personal shoe projects or personal like other than shoes? It can be anything. Are you working on something for well, yourself that you're like excited about? I, the only thing is like what I mentioned earlier, which is like the Khan Academy and yeah. I'm totally obsessed with it. Um, it's really cool. It, I want to get into like class. It's amazing.
Are you gonna use it on something? Like, do you no. have some? No, you just just no. To learn. You know, I think for me, like, um, I I've been on a spiritual journey for a very long time, so um, I think. I was more interested in it because I'm like, okay, here's spirituality and here's science and let's mm -hmm. put them together oh. and see what that knowledge brings up, you know, okay. so, like teaching myself both sides. Um, so cool. yeah, it's just for fun. It's just for me. I am not trying to change my career right now. No, no, no. <laughs> You're really good at what you do. So <laughs> I'm fine with what I'm doing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and how about, shoes what kind of shoes do you wear inside like i know you're not you're at home so you might not be wearing anything but maybe what shoes have you been wearing recently um i'm embarrassed to say this but i'm just gonna throw it out there um criticize me all you want but i have been wearing crocs oh yeah <laughs> uh, and I i'll show them. you i'll show i'll show you what i'm wearing right now yeah i want to see um i am wearing Nike socks Ooh. and slippers. Oh my god, those slippers are really cute. Where are they from? I'll show you, I'll show, show you in person. Uh huh. Oh, they're so they're, cute. They're Roger Vivier. Oh and, my gosh, uh, I love it. They're so sparkly. Yes. They make me so happy. So it's like, you know, they're slippers inside, but yep. they're clingy. And... Yep. I love it. Socks with slippers. <laughs> 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 yeah, why not? You know? But Crocs, I, I know another shoe designer who does that. She, she, shares, a, she shares a space with me right over the, over there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. She has like the, the flame Crocs. She wears it right now. I don't know. Let me see. Let me see. Is she there? Oh, you want to see it? Yeah, she's there. Yeah. Hold on. Ta -da! I just put my foot in there. Okay, just the foot. <laughs> Yes, for the flame. I love it. <laughs> but she, she doesn't have the holes on it. I'm, and oh, really? Actually, yeah, it doesn't have holes. I'm, this is the first one I've ever seen that didn't have holes in it. Oh, interesting. I wonder. Yeah, but it has flames. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, like, it's just like one of the top selling brands right now. No big deal. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I think like, you know, it's, it's interesting because again, focusing on like trends and like, uh, seeing, yeah. seeing different aesthetics. Yeah. If I was in Austin, people would be wearing Crocs but they'd be wearing them in a different way, right? Oh. Um, and then here in Los Angeles, they're they're pairing it with like Gucci and anything oh. like that. And um, with Nike socks, like I was just wearing, you know, like stuff like that. So it's really, um, it's really interesting how it changes from city to city. And now I'm seeing what's going on in Brooklyn with Crocs. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in, in LA, do you go for a walk? I mean, I guess people don't walk too much, but do you go somewhere to just watch people walk by to see their shoes, to see what's well, trending right now? What do you feel I, like? I, well, there's, I mean, there's not a lot trending right no. now, I think besides, you know, Birkenstocks and Crocs. So, um, but you know, I take my dog for a walk a couple a couple times a day. So um, in the neighborhood I'm in, I get to see a lot more, you know, people. So that's been good. Um, but yeah, there's not, that's pretty much it. I, yeah. I think, I think overall, it's like slipper land, it's crop mm -hmm. land, comfort, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know when it's going to end. Like, are yeah. we going to address you sure. again? You know, and we will, but like, what does that look like? So yeah. that's been something that I've been like working on right now. You know, right now um, I'm working on holiday 21 for Katy Perry. And mm -hmm. so um, uh, yeah. bring the um, more of like a, a sparkly kind of collection. And mm -hmm. hopefully by then we'll have, everyone will have a vaccine and um, people will want to go out, but it's like rolling the dice, right? Like yeah. you don't, Oh, if that's actually going to happen. So you right. have to make sure you have that balance of right. um, threat and comfort yes. and casual and everything kind mm. of a mashup. So mm -hmm. that's interesting. I want to go into a little more deeper into the design, but then I was like, oh, which styles do you like to make in your classes? What's your favorite mm. class so far? I Out think the slippers are my favorite. And I, I, I think the reason why is because they're just so fuzzy and cute and fun. 
Yeah. And the feeling I see women get when they finish their fuzzy slippers, they're just like, so they're like, they turn so into excited. kids again. You know what yeah. I mean? We're all yeah. like this, we're having a slumber party, you know? Yeah, so cute. So that's the kind of feeling that we, we collectively have when we're finished. Uh -huh. Oh, that's fun. So it's super fun. How do you glue, do you glue anything on the bottom, on the sole? That yes. Does it do, how do you prepare that? Or like, do you have them cut it off, cut the hair off? or is... Exactly. We have oh. to trim, trim, trim. We have, we have to give it an extreme haircut. So yeah. um, I thought maybe you send like a shaver with, <laughs> for the package. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we go hard with the scissors and like cutting it really short. short. I, they have like a little buzzer at home. They yeah, totally they use it. Um, I will tell you, this is the most fun class, but it is the messiest, messiest. class. Messiest, yeah. yeah. Don't do it near a computer, no. Oh my gosh, no. And then like at some times, like if I'm doing it with them, like I'll get, I'll like inhale fur and I'm just constantly doing this the whole yeah, time. Yeah. Um, Even though you don't have allergies, you feel like you have something. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> a little about designing. Where do you get your inspiration from? Um, you know, I kind of just feel out where we are currently in the world and what's mm -hmm. happening. And, um, and then I push myself forward into a space where I'm like, okay, in six months, how will we be feeling in one mm -hmm. year? How will we be feeling? Yeah. Um, you know, for example, um, you know, with with the collection that I just worked on now, um, you know, the the idea for this specific um, collection is to give somebody an experience. So, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's like, like I said earlier, slumber party mm -hmm. or uh, candy land mm -hmm. or things like that. Um, you know, so um, I tend to make it like a little escape. So. Yeah. For example, what we're going through right now in the pandemic, um, you know, I feel like the thrift store right now is the hip happening spot, right? Yeah, People yeah. love the thrift store. They're upcycling. Mm -hmm. They're um, not buying new. Yeah. Well, as much new as they were before. Um, they're redoing their homes because yeah. it's work from home, live at work. Yeah. And so we're trying not to spend a lot of money. And then the people that have money are donating yeah. some of their stuff to yeah. bring in new. Um, so I thought it was really great to come up with a thrift store concept. And oh. mm -hmm. so the concept would just be like an escape to shopping at the thrift store. And uh -huh. you know what you're going to get when you go to the thrift store. You're going to get lizard print. You're going to get leopard. You're going to get um, retro sunglasses. Yeah. With a gradation, you know, yeah. um, you're gonna get um, fur, you yeah. know, faux fur or whatever. Yeah. So like just bringing in those elements, elements. Of, you know, that it kind of immerses you in that. Um, World. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And do you usually kind of look for materials and colors first? Or do you have like an image or inspiration board going on? And then do you sketch first? Or do you what, what do you do first? Uh, well, okay, so it depends, but there is a kind of a guideline that I use. Um, for me, like, say it's like Summerland, you know, mm -hmm. if, so if I'm thinking about Summerland, automatically, I'm thinking bright colors. And so yeah. that puts me in my palette first. But if I'm thinking thrift store, I'm thinking materials first. Mm -hmm. So I go for materials first, no matter what, I really need to start off with a mood board. So yes, I you have a mood board. Mm -hmm. board. And this is like, one of my favorite parts of the process because I'll stay up to like two or three in the morning and just like I'm like a little gremlin I'm like give me more give me more give me more um, looking for images yeah looking for images and I'm on crazy weird websites you know like it's just like it's just, it's so endless and yeah. I could keep going and keep going um but I have to cut myself off at some yeah. point so. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 I mean I don't know if you remember the time when you you know, magazines were big. Did you, do you like the process of online searching better or than like print? You know, uh, I think if, if you would ask me five years ago, I'd have been like, this stinks. I want to touch and feel. And, but I think like I've gotten used yeah. to not even yeah. so 
resources with magazines anymore. Yeah. It's like yeah. hard to even, where do I even get them, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. true. <laughs> so um, it, is, it is easier. It is less paper. It is yeah. less moving around. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I miss magazines, though. I miss them so much. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. You know? um, do you do consulting work for other individuals, or do you work exclusively right now for Katie? Um, so right now, Katie Perry is my, my only, um, client slash brand that I work with, um, uh, being a freelancer, um, I cannot right now take anything else on just because of timing and because the art of shoes is my baby. Yeah. Um, and so I, I need to nurture her as much as I can. Yes. Yes. Um, but uh, previously when I had, um, uh, more time, I was working, I think I brought it up earlier, Tasha, a brand yeah. out of Guatemala. They're yeah. such a wonderful um, brand and have such mm -hmm. a wonderful message. They give back to the artisans, yeah. local artisans in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. They're able to send their kids to college now because of the um, business the that they business. Yeah, yeah. created. So it's really wonderful. Um, but yeah, I haven't worked with them for maybe like a year or something. I'm not okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I um I asked that because there there are a lot of people who you know ask like you know I want to start my own line you know yeah how? and yeah what advice would you give like a new designer like who wants to start their own line like what would the price oh actually mm, let's skip that question I was gonna ask I was gonna ask what would you what kind of advice you would give for if you if they want to start their own line if they come to you for example but mm -hmm. right now you don't take so let's yeah I don't but I yeah. but I will say I will say that there are just some really important things to think about when you want to start your own brand mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I absolutely support anyone wants who wants to start their own brand um, I think you need to think about price point what yeah. you want the price to be you need to think about where you want to develop. Mm -hmm. um, and um, who your customer is, how many styles you want per collection, um, and then um, where you want to be positioned in the market. Is there a white space for you? Is there a space that's open yeah. that you can take um, yeah. and, and dominate, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Am I um, and I think those are really, really super important questions because a lot of times mm -hmm. you can say, like, oh, I want my price point to be attainable. I want it to be $89 for a pump. And I'm just throwing it out there. Um, but then I want my shoes to be made in Italy. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Yes. <laughs> yes. You yes. know, so you kind of have to, like, have your entire plan laid out um, mm -hmm. of what you want. And then go from there and use that as a guide. Yep. Gotcha, gotcha. And then what is your – so you were saying, like, timeline-wise, from design – to all the way to production and on the shelf for Katy Perry. What, how, what's the timing, would you say? Six months or one year? Mm, okay, so I just finished the Holiday 21 collection and that's delivering in December. What month are we in? Damn. Right now or it's February. Mm -hmm. But I guess January, you worked on it, January. Mm -hmm. Even earlier, maybe December. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like it's a year. It's a year. I well, yeah, and I, I only say that because, you know, the factories we're working with are working with other brands. Yeah. We're not exclusive. Nobody really is right now. Yeah. Um, and, and with the COVID and, happening. Like and COVID and um, with getting, like, prototypes you know we have a prototype meeting where we see the protos first before we actually then final uh, go to final samples the samples then need to be shown to the buyers the buyers need to make a decision um then they come back then the orders are placed then we're uh -huh. booking the space there's a whole time oh, yeah so it is a lot so it usually lot. yeah we're working a year in advance, in advance. Mm -hmm. that's good to know for people out there because you know <laughs> A lot of people do come be like, I want to have a shoe line and I want to launch like in two months. Yeah. Like, I no. Know. <laughs> no. No. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um and you're you're saying I, I it might overlap. You were saying that your favorite part of the process of shoe making and design is the mood boarding. 
Well, one of my favorites. One of your favorites. Okay, tell me more. What's your favorite? I don't know, Keiko. I like it all. You like it all? That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. The only thing I don't like are the, the meetings with uh, sales. And not, uh, not that I hate our salespeople. I absolutely love every single one of them. But, like, I just want to get past it. You know, let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> Does it affect your design at all? Like, your meetings with the sales? Is that kind of why? Uh, or? It does. It does, but um, it's all very valid. Like I would say, you know, for me and what I learned in working with um, Steve Madden, you know, which is just such a hardcore company, you know, you can make beautiful shoes and fun shoes yeah. all day. Yeah. But if those aren't going to sell, then there's no point. Like, don't right. you want to put those shoes on somebody's feet? Yeah. So you know, say that there was a shoe that was, that retailed very well last year and right. it was like a low kitten heel or something yeah. like that for argument's sake. You want to update that because your customer is going to want to come back for that, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's just, um, you know, it's kind of the way we have to think when we're thinking designing. about designing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then I guess there were, there were probably times when the sales numbers kind of tell you a direction that you might not agree on or yeah like possible? sometimes sometimes it'll be the beat a dead horse kind of thing like mm -hmm. oh okay we we did this shoe like five years ago we should do another you know we should do it again no no we should, <laughs> <laughs> right. we should right. move on <laughs> yeah we should move on yeah. yeah something new that's why there's designers like you yeah and new, you know, new cool things exactly and i will say like out of all the brands that I've worked on, Katie is wonderful at that. You know, when she's done with it, she's done with it. And she doesn't want to like keep repeating the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. And that is like such a gift because right. if she says no, then that's no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Right. And then how was your like, so um, the design that I think you might have put on stories, is it already out? It's a pajama one. Is it out already? Or is that yeah. something in the holiday? It's out. It's out. It's out. So the one that I had sketched originally was on a high heel. Um, uh -huh. Because I think for me as a designer, if I'm sketching the first idea on a high heel, then it can kind of trickle into other spots. So it mm -hmm. trickled into a little pajama flat. Yeah, um, so that cute. is that I know it's so cute and yeah. that is out at retail and the theme of that was slumber party so Aww. yeah cool. so now I I started my own personal Instagram Selena McCartney designs just because I felt like if I was posting design my design work on the art of shoes it started to get confusing for my customer they're like oh we can make that and I was like wait no 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 all right, go to Keiko. <laughs> that's, that's great, though. Oh, you can be like, that's my inspiration slash my creation slash, you know. <laughs> well, that's cool. Slumber party theme seems to be going on to in both, you know, the art of shoes and Katie's. So Definitely. Like, and just COVID in general. In general. Like, slippers, slippers, slippers. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the favorite design you've worked on for Katie so far? Um, or that's out in the market. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably the, the lipstick heel. Um, um, I'll post it today on on in stories. But um, it's so cute. It's like um, she did a collaboration with um, um. Oh my gosh, I'm totally forgetting this. It's not Revlon, is it? CoverGirl, CoverGirl. Cover Girl. And um, you know, she did her own makeup line. And so when she did that, I was like, oh, why don't we take that lipstick and use it as a heel? Yeah. And so we did a little lipstick heel and it's got like a clear, like if it's a pink lipstick, it's got like a pink clear uh, TPU or PVC upper. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and they're so cute. Oh, so yeah. Do you wear the creations? Like, do you keep a sample or do you, yeah? Um, I keep some samples. Well, not samples, but like production or whatever. Sample size, unfortunately. But um, <laughs> I keep I keep some of them that I, that I just love so wow. much. Um, yeah, and I, I wear them, but I feel like, and this is so funny, I feel like because I worked on them a year previously, I'm like, Okay, I'm already on to on the to next thing. Yeah. <laughs> You're always ahead of the curve, maybe, you know, like ahead of the market. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Oh, but okay. they still, I still look at them and love them every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and during the pandemic, I saw on Instagram that you moved and I remember you were selling or donating or doing something with all the shoes that you had. Is that kind of like your shoe collection as your own personal collection or was it kind of like inspiration and all this? Like, are you talking about the vintage shoes or the yeah vintage okay. or yeah. i don't know so, some were vintage some were kind of not vintage looking i don't know yeah. i wasn't sure so um so when the store closed um we were left with a lot of inventory and you know then moving back into my house so um i donated a lot of the inventory to the women's shelter um oh. very near and dear to me and to my heart and so i donated a lot of the new inventory there as far as the vintage shoes i had collected about three thousand pairs of shoes in my life i know wow. so i used to have a shoe archive in brooklyn not far from your space or your old space i don't know where your new space is but um not far from your old space and um it was a very in south fourth actually oh it's right there yeah okay. and so um i had a shoe archive and a, sh a design studio and um so I, I had collected all of these shoes over the years, like where, where I'm traveling, like if I'm in Tokyo or Europe or wherever, and just shoes that I loved and wanted to keep for reference or just wanted for myself. And um, that's a lot of freaking shoes, by the way. I just realized. Yes. So yes. Many shoes. I mean, but how? I, I don't know what I was doing at the time. And, <laughs> but whatever. I had a lot of shoes. And um, how did it they, fit in a. Space. Well, like, I had to have a whole, whole space for it. for it. Yeah. yeah. And it's crazy, right? And so, so while I was using my design studio, because I was a freelancer at the time, um, or just started freelancing at the time, I was like, okay, I'll put all my shoes in here. And so my designer friends, my shoe designer friends would come over and they'd be like, oh my God, can I use this for the heel reference? reference. Like whatever they're working on. And I was like, yeah, sure. Oh. Um, and so then I was like, you know what? I should just rent out these shoes yeah. for references. And then I had like all my girlfriends, like Liz Lee, who was working mm -hmm. on Derek Lamb at the yeah. time. You know, um, I had like all kinds of people. <gasps> in. And then my friend that um, was a stylist for HBO, she would come in and pull for different um, shows. Oh, wow. And, um, so yeah, I had a lot of shoes. So they all went to Austin with me from New York. And then I just like, I was like, I'm not taking these anywhere else like this. I have to clear this out. So I kept about, I don't know, like 600 of them. Okay. That's bad. Bring it down. That's not bad. But oh. I seriously use them. I use yeah. them for references. Like I'm about to work on spring 22. Yeah. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to my references and start pulling, you know, heels, yeah. espadrille, whatever. Construction. Yeah. Construction. yeah. Oh, that's so great. That's so yeah. I'm curious what made the cut. Maybe, um, you know, I like one day I'd love to see your archives. You absolutely <laughs> do. You have to. You would love it so much. So are they in LA with you or are they still back yeah. at home? You brought yeah. it with you? They're with me. They're in storage. They're with all the archive from the wow. rest of them. I'll show you a, a pair that I just bought, actually. Um, these are, oh, these, wow. These are vintage YSL. Okay. They're so great. And I actually yeah. just bought my friend, um, Liz. Um, I will drop her name at Busy Lady Baca. She is an archivist. And uh -huh. she hence amazing vintage warehouse in downtown Los Angeles. And so oh, wow. I started working on spring and um, she just started shooting me photos and was like, here's what I have. And I'm like, yes. But now I end up with more shoes. Right. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a part of your work and like you love it too. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I think it's justifiable. <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. Um, do you have like favorite material that you like to work with? Like both workshop wise as well. You know, you said fluffy. I don't know if that's your favorite material per se, but, and as well as designing right now, is there like a material that you're like eyeing or mm -hmm. I don't, if it's um, a secret, you don't need to tell me, but. Oh, no, 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 it's not a secret <laughs> at all. I'm trying to think because a favorite is a hard 
question for me because I like a lot. Um, but can I say my least favorite? Sure. My least favorite material to work with with your hands uh -huh. is clear PVC. Yeah. Or you. It is so freaking hard to last. It's so freaking hard to keep in place. At least for me, if you know any tricks or anybody knows any tricks, please let me know because it is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I guess with in Zoom class too, like it's hard to kind of, yeah, it's hard. Well, have you even, have you like tried to cut a pattern out of yeah. your PVC? Yeah. It's like it never works. To me, it doesn't work. And then you obsess it and students will get like, it, it's a little bit off, you know? It's just like yeah. really hard to control. Yeah. And once you do um, last it on a sandal, it I doesn't need nails. Yeah. Like it is hard to keep it in place. And yeah. yeah. It's such a cool material. Yes. It thinks about it, you know? It's so great. So yeah. maybe that sticks to the more like lasted, yeah, kind yeah. Of situation. Maybe there's um, Sanderma might have one of those um, what's it called? Um, oh my god, the um, what what? Oh my god, I'm blanking out the name. But you know, before gluing, there's like another prep preparing. You know, it prepares your material for you a little bit. Oh, um, it's not a deglazer. It's not. Um, oh, you mean like an acetone or something? Yeah, but acetone kind of melts things too. So yeah. it's another one and I'm forgetting. It's specifically for plastic stuff. I thought I I if I remember it, I'm going to send it to you. I yeah. the name yeah. of it. Yeah. No. I feel like they have it. It's like a Renia brand, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know if it works with with PVC, but I think it could. It's so cute. You're right. Um do you have a motto or mantra that you live by? Um, I do. I do. Um, I, I live by do big things and stay humble. Hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I feel like, um, it's, it's, it's interesting, like how often our ego comes in and tries to take over and mm. tries to, I think you and I have talked about this before when I was telling you, like, it's hard to like, not compare yourself to other people mm -hmm. or like, you know, stay, it should, it, there's a lot of outside voices and, and whatnot. And, um, that may push you to like, be somebody who you aren't truly at your, you know, who you died at your core. Um, and I think that that's really, really important. It's been mm. a huge uh, lifelong lesson for me. Um, mm. And just going back to like being raised by a single mama, you know, mm. it's like, I watched her work her butt off. She worked so hard. And I am so grateful that um, she taught me so many um, skills. In yeah. that and so, yeah. um, you know, do, do work hard, things. work hard, but don't yeah. let it get your head, you know, like, yeah. just just stay, be yourself, basically. Be, be yeah. yourself, yes. Yeah. Love that. Um, I know you were saying that you don't like to plan for the future, possibly, but then <laughs> <laughs> as, if you had all the resources available to you, what kind of shoes would you design or make, and for who? Ooh, okay. For myself, yep. number one. Yep. Um, and I feel that I feel very um, excited about what's coming in now with um, non leather materials. Uh huh. Um, I don't necessarily feel like they are quite there yet. Yeah. Um, and I think that they will be. Um, but I would say that that's, that's something that I would love to work with once it does get a little bit more exciting, yeah. um, like fun, more fun finishes, more aesthetically pleasing finishes, mm -hmm. um, not so expensive because it, I mean, it's just like you're going to the grocery store and you're getting organic groceries, right? It's so expensive. Yeah. It's better for you, but it's so expensive. And so, um, you know, I think and I hope that we get to a point where we can bring all of these materials into brands like 
the com more of the commercial brand yeah. you know? because yeah. the reason why a lot of companies do stay away from it is because it affects the price it does make oh. it more expensive and right. The, the consumer is so used to paying a lower price for something. We have conditioned them to believe that, you know, a, a pump should be less than $100, you know? Um, I mean, if you're in New York or Los Angeles, yeah, a pump can be $300, but that's still crazy, you know? Um, and so I think that, you know, once we get to a point where a lot of these materials are a little bit more elevated and um, not so um, hard to, to get um, as far as like price point, that's what I would love to work on. Yeah. Cool. And then do you take design apprentices or assistants? Um, right now, no, but absolutely open in the future. I would love that. Cool, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Because there's, you know, people sometimes just comes to ask me if there's openings. And I'm like, I don't really know what everybody's openings are. I'm not like a HR <laughs> person, but like, you know, it's good to know. Um, where do you want to be in like three or five or like 10 years? Um, I would like to have more Art of Shoes locations mm -hmm. in different cities. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would be really awesome. Um, I would like to have my own collection. Mm -hmm. I actually have never thought of that until this year. Oh, oh so wow. Year. Last year, like um, during COVID. During COVID. Wow. I was wow. like, you know what? Something is pushing me forward to doing my own collection. Oh. Um, and uh, I mean, I don't think that would be in the very near future, but you know, that is something that is in my brain right now. That's great. That's yeah. so great. Yeah. Look, looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, are you thinking like multiple styles? Is it going to be one style or? I think it would be small. Oh. I think it would be really small and really focused. And yeah. you know what? really loving right now with a lot of people and how they're treating their collections is is have one style and go deep on the materials yeah. so like, you know if it's like a sneaker color it up in like seven different ways yeah. or like a um, sandal do it like eight different colors right. whatever you know and then just stand for what that is I think that in working with a lot of these brands that have huge lines like not only are we wasting a lot yeah but you know we're we're not really focused and not we're not really standing for anything and believing anything yeah. and i think for me like i definitely want to stand for something and believe in something yeah. and i can't make a freaking decision to save my life when it comes to materials i, I told you i love them all it's so hard you know i want them in everything right. um great thing about um the katie perry collection that we're working on is you know we're not we're not overdeveloping um, as yeah. all brands do. We're seeing color cads, you know, which is yeah. wonderful. And yeah. uh, we are there's a lot less waste um, than in previous seasons. Yeah. Uh, we're vegan, so mm -hmm. that's even better. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of um, things yeah. that we're doing differently now. That's great. Going yeah, on. and it's not just a wasteful of just actual shoes, but like resources and like the time of, and the designer's energy and everything, right? Because you, yeah. come up, you have to come up with like so many SKUs and then you're like really only a few really go into the store sometimes. And that's awesome. Yeah, and like the mentality, the old school mentality mm -hmm. in the shoe industry is yeah. do 10 to get to five. And I'm like, why? <laughs> focus <laughs> yes i agree i agree you know yeah i, I think the landscape is changing us especially with the COVID. it kind of pushed us or like the industry maybe forward a little bit in that sense of like you really have to prioritize like what's important and like not do things that are wasteful you yeah. know yeah i don't know i hope to see a little change like that but yeah you're I mean, like I think about that with the artist shoes like I said before like when I first started with mm -hmm. the sandal making and the sneaker making I was like oh my god I love that one I love that one I love this one and then I have all this stuff and um you know as the years go by and you start to learn and things around you change and you're educating yourself it's like no we cannot get rid of need 
there is a level of anxiety though with COVID because if you don't buy it right away, it could be gone and you don't know when it's coming back. So like for example, with the, like the leopard fur that yeah. I got flippers, yeah. I ended up going to a certain su supplier and getting that leopard. I go back because it ended up being the number one skew. Everyone wanted, everyone wanted leopard or pink. And I'm like, okay, these are the top two, right? Um, I go back to get the leopard, gone. Really? When are you guys getting more? Uh, not sure. Go back again. When are oh. you guys getting Oh, the company went under. We can't oh. get it. Oh, and no. So it's like, oh, my God. So wow. Downtown or whatever, you know, mood yeah. or, or trying to look for a leopard. And I can't duplicate that same thing. And I'm wow. already like, my editorial on it. Yeah. So it's like, dang it. I can't believe that happened. But it's one of those things that you just learn and you learn. just have to it, if you can't make a plan for that and right. I'm not going to buy more than I need, you know, at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And I don't have a store to store anything. No. Yeah, you're right. And the storage is, you have enough storage space. So you're in. no more. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you so much for taking your time. Like your story is amazing. And, um, I think you're, yeah, you're like, uh, point of view and, in design is just fun and amazing so i look forward to seeing what you're gonna create next thank you and um and i think it also translates to your uh styles that you teach in class too so i i'm looking forward to what you know your students are gonna make oh yeah it's gonna be super fun i can't wait there's yeah. there's so much more ahead and i'm really excited it's and just the uh, trying to make sure that you know we don't require so many tools that it becomes right so you can make it at home you're right mm -hmm. you know that's the that's the beauty of your classes really yeah I, I actually i can attest to it like i had one i don't know if she's on it right now but um one student who wanted to do a mule, a non mule class. Mule class would have been a little easier. It was a stiletto class from oh, home yeah. by mm -hmm. Zoom. Mm -hmm. She didn't have any tools, so I sent her everything, you know, lasts to all the tools, even heat gun. Wow. I say? Drills, drill wow. bits, like stuff like that. And, you know, it's a lot. It's so, a lot. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of compromising and there's a lot of fudging and it's, it's, they're all beginner courses. So I think it's yeah. okay. I think it's, I think I it's think okay. It's, it's to get everybody interested and to know that actually you can make shoes and then how actually it actually does take a little effort and time, you know, mm -hmm. I think they're, yeah, I think it's yeah. fun. Isn't it beautiful? The reaction that students have once they finish their pair of shoes it's just yes. like they just turn into this like light and they're just so excited and they yes. can't believe that they did this you know yes, yes. So it's yes. really gratifying i really love yeah. it do you feel like that's something that keeps you going with the classes oh yeah definitely yeah for sure yeah. Oh, and then cool. getting to know them like i had a class the other night and um i think there were four returning students so that was great and i was like oh hey so and so how's your puppy you know they yeah. got a hey so and so how's your husband hey yeah. how's your daughter you know so it's like really cool that you're really just connecting with your uh with your Bringing student your community yeah um, really nice it's really yeah. nice sweet yeah well, I keep it going i'm looking yeah. forward and Thank somebody you. actually asked, what's your, um, hold on. I'm going to yeah. look at the questions. Um, sorry, I didn't even like look at all the questions while we were going. I saw, I popped in a few and I was like, okay, we're still talking. <laughs> yeah, okay, oops. Um, and her Instagram is the.art.of.shoes. And then the your personal one is Selena McCartney. Selena McCartney Design. Design, mm -hmm. yeah. And then, wait, there's a uh, Khan Academy for shoes. No, that's not shoes. It's for physics. But hold on, hold on. What do you guys it's, think of those new Nike flies? Oh, the flies? Uh, are like hands-free the ones? I kind of like it, to be honest. I love them. Yeah, I thought it's brilliant. I like how they look like high heels, and then, like, they're so great. Yeah. yeah. I wonder how long, I kind of want to know like the back end of like how long it took them to develop it. You know, I know they just like, 
they said um, someone someone I was talking to last night said that they were working on that for like ten years or something. It, it wow. was a long time. I mean, Nike works on their product for, for a long, long time. Crazy. It's amazing. I mean, see, like, see, I'm, <laughs> that's amazing. Ten years. Yeah, yeah. Is sample size for a woman size seven? In the brands that I work on, yes, currently. Sometimes they're size six. Mm -hmm. Got it. Jessica, she's a sewer. She makes, and she made a, um, she made shoes, uh, learning from I Can Make Shoes course, I think. She says, what? 3,000 incredible. That's a museum. I was about to say, too, maybe you could archive, like, make, make a Selena museum, shoe museum. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what else? Oops, sorry. Hold on. Um. <laughs> Mar says, Selena en enabling my shoe buying and hoarding. So, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> hold on. Sorry. Do, okay. And somebody quoted your, your do big things and stay humble. That's great. Uh, <laughs> yes, my daughter has always wanted to be a Selena prodigy. 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 <laughs> oh, I think that's... Miguel, I love him. He's so, <laughs> so good. His daughter's an amazing, she's an amazing artist. And I don't know how old she is right now, but when she was little, she would like sketch shoes and oh my gosh, she's just, I can't even imagine what her shoe sketches look like now. Oh. And then what Nike also had a contest to do a design, to design a hands-free shoe. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool. Would you add more styles after um, Birkenstocks, you think? Or yes, do you definitely. Um, I'm not sure what they are yet, but I definitely will. They'll definitely be summer. Because um, I feel like Birkenstocks is more of the spring launch, and then summer we'll, we'll have something. Yeah. Cool. You're yeah. Busy. You're busy. You have so many things going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, any sketching courses you recommend? Um, gosh, I don't know. I hate that I don't know the answer to that. Um, but if you send me a direct message, I can find a resource for you somewhere. That's great. Um, right. Yeah. And so I agree. I mean, I think if, if this is a person looking to learn sketching, um, print out some shoes online. Go to shoe sketches on Google, um, print them out, trace over them. Know that there are different um, points of view when you're sketching. There's a lot of um, flat sketching, which, which is probably the easiest to sketch with. And then once you start making shoes, if you haven't already, um, imagine the last inside the shoe and you can start doing like a three-dimensional. Um, like three-quarter three view. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for that advice. I think it's great. Like a lot of people, I think that is like that um, hurdle, right? A lot of people come to you being like, I can't sketch. They have like a napkin sketched, you know, what should I do? But I think it's practice. But, it well, really is practice. I only sketch shoes and stick figures and it's because I practice so much. <laughs> yeah, someone said, I also want to learn sketching. I'll take your advice of tracing. Thanks, yeah. I'll do. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. So much. Such a long time out of your day. And thank you, everybody, for being here. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you online soon and maybe in person one day. I'd love to visit you in L.A. Yes. And I will be in New York as soon as I can. For yeah, sure. You're not missing much, though, right now. It's really snowy and slushy. <laughs> yeah, slushy. <laughs> and that, that's great. <laughs> well, you can come this way then. Enjoy the beautiful weather every single day. Oh. <laughs> I'm almost like, when's it gonna get cloudy? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love that. <laughs> well, be Thank healthy, you. stay healthy. And yeah, I want to see your designs. So keep it going. Thank you so awesome. much. Bye. Right. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye.